Oh my god, it's like trying to wrestle a wild bear. So, you're looking for a sporty coupe? Ah, that'd be something German then. Actually, what if I told you there's another way, and it comes from Korea? No, not that Korea, South Korea. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Hyundai i30 Fastback N. Okay, so there's a good chance you know about this car already. This car has been out for around two years now, but when Hyundai gave me the chance to review it, I wasn't exactly going to say no, was I? This version may be on its way out, but it's not going out quietly. The engine in which this boisterous, raucous exhaust is attached to is a two litre turbocharged four pot, which offers 275 horsepower along with 353 newton meters of torque. There is also an overboost function, which gives you a temporary torque figure of 378 newton meters. If you would like both of those in pound feet, I will drop a subtitle below. But what about performance? It will hit 62 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds, and the top speed is a rather Germanic 155 miles per hour. I have a lovely six-speed manual gearbox at my disposal and Hyundai was very keen to stress that with the i30N and the i30 Fastback N, this is a car for petrol heads, so you can only have a six-speed manual. Although it is worth noting that for the facelift, it will also be a choice of an eight-speed dual-clutch auto. However, I would always have the six-speed manual. The change is crisp, slick, mechanical, and it's a very snappy change. It is a lovely gear change. It's not quite up there in regard to the Honda Civic Type R or perhaps the Ford Focus ST, but it really isn't a million miles away. Now, if you're wondering where the N comes from, it actually has two meanings. The first of which is for Nürburgring, where this car was developed, and that's also where Hyundai has its testing center. So I'm gonna enjoy this corner. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's bright. The second N is for Namyang, and that is where you will find Hyundai's global R&D center. And although this is a South Korean product, I must admit it doesn't feel European, it looks European. And if you took the Hyundai badges off, I think you could almost be fooled into thinking this is a, a genuine European product. Now, the, the reason why I say almost is because this interior, it isn't quite up to German standards, but I will get onto that a little bit later. The performance is up to standard though, there's no doubt about that. This car is as punchy as being on the receiving end of a jab from Anthony Joshua. God, real knockout performance. It's so good that you may need to pull over just to double check you're definitely driving a Hyundai. This can't be a Hyundai. No, something's not right here. It's definitely a, a Hyundai badge. Hmm. Okay, let's come to the back. That's also a Hyundai badge. Owner's manual, let's get the owner's manual. Look, something's not right here. Right. Very thick owner's manual. That says Hyundai as well. Actually, there's a good reason for this, and that is a man called Albert Beerman. For some of you, that name may be familiar. That's because he used to be the head honcho at BMW's M division, and he was responsible for cars such as the iconic and legendary 1M. That's not a bad thing to have on your CV, is it? I have no less than five driving modes at my disposal. There's two buttons on the steering wheel. On the left-hand side, I've got drive mode, and here you'll find normal, sport, or eco, but if you want something a bit more racy, on the right-hand side, you've got a checkered flag button. Hit it and you'll automatically go into M mode. Not only will that give you more performance, but <laughs> it does make the ride a bit more jiggly, actually a lot more jiggly. So to be honest, on UK roads, I probably wouldn't use the N mode. Now this road isn't too bad. The ride is relatively compliant, but take it through some broken roads and you'll be doing this and going up and down 
and it seems like the car's only purpose is to knock the fillings loose out of your teeth. Thankfully, you do have a custom mode, and I would urge you to take the time to play about with it as you can fine tune the settings. So for example, you can have the steering in normal, but have the engine in Sport Plus, and more importantly, you can dial down the firmness and the busyness of the ride. I don't think there's going to be many people who will be quite hardcore enough to drive the car all day, every day, with the suspension set to its firmest. Now I can put up with firm suspensions, but I think this might be oh, the straw that broke the camel's back. Probably quite literally. Oh ho ho! Sorry! me that's never ever gets old <laughs> this is what a golf gti cannot offer you an exhaust that makes you giggle like a schoolboy up to mischief and that's what i like about the i30n well the i30 fastback m this car has got character it's got it's got more of a soul it feels more alive compared to a Golf GTI. I've got nothing against the Golf GTI, it's a very polished car. But <laughs> the N <laughs> it's something else. Oh lovely rev match. One that I did myself, I lad. This car does have rev matching. But if you're someone like me, you'll probably want to turn it off. This car does also have launch control, and I would love to demonstrate that, but it's quite cold and the roads are damp and greasy, so I don't really think it's going to be that effective. Quickly, time for a shameless plug. Don't forget I have a merchandise which can be purchased at controlandshift.com. I will pop the website in the video description below. You can buy this t-shirt as well as a few others so yes go on treat yourself it's christmas i mentioned the rev matching a few moments ago but as i said i don't tend to use it that much because the pedal placement in all honesty is pretty spot on the, uh, the pedals themselves have got a nice weight to them they're not too heavy not they're not too light and you can really heel and toe with ease so it's nice to have that rev matching function but if you're a keen driver, you won't need it. Although the launch control may come in handy for a traffic light Grand Prix, who knows? Oh. 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 So, it's safe to say this car certainly goes, but has it got the handling to go with it? Well, let's find a few twisties and find out. Oh, some twisties, brilliant. Right, and drop it down into third. No, I've got a car in front of me, that's no good, is it? I must admit the brakes are fantastic. You can really stamp on them into second. Oh, that exhaust. And what I love about this car, it's very confidence inspiring. Even though it's cold and damp, this car gives you the confidence to really gun it from the get go. Now, yes, although the grip is pretty good, the car can wash wide a little bit, particularly in these kind of conditions. So I would argue something like a Civic Type R or a Ford Focus ST would be a bit better in the corners, but that's not to say that this car is no good because that would be a lie, a dirty lie. The i30 Fastback N is competent in the corners, more than competent. At each corner, I've got Pirelli P0 tyres, which are wrapped around 19-inch alloys. I've got big, beefy brakes. I've got an electronically controlled limited slip differential, or ELSD for short. And I also have electronically controlled suspension, or ECS for short. That means this car's got variable dampers. And all these components combined add to a rewarding, involving, and engaging drive. And that's exactly what you want from a car like this. 
Earlier I spoke about Albert Bierman. Now let me let you in on a little secret. Well, I say it's not really a secret, but anyway. This and the i30N hatchback, these were the first front wheel drive performance cars that he has overseen. And I think it's safe to say, he's done a pretty sterling job. One of the pitfalls of sending a lot of power through to the front wheels is that of course you can lose traction because the front wheels are having to do the steering and the power and you get understeer as well and no one likes understeer understeer is nobody's friend and for the most part this car does pretty well i have got a little bit of understeer but to be honest that's when i've been pushing the car to the limit somewhat as much as i can on the public road in cold and damp conditions so you're, you're always going to have a lot of traction the other sorry just put my sun visor down the other thing you'll probably get from a fast front wheel drive car is torque steer this is when the front wheels pretty much fight each other and the steering wheel itself is is wanting to wrestle its way out of your hands and let me just lift off a bit slow down granted this road uh, this bit of road isn't dead straight but let me just actually I can come to I can, I can actually come to a stop there we go right, foot hard down oh hello okay a little bit of torque steer there well obviously you're not going to be driving around with your hands off the steering wheel are you I wouldn't advise that so there is a smidge of torque steer but it's controllable and at no point do you think oh my god it's like trying to wrestle a wild bear no not at all a little bit of torque steer but it's manageable and i kind of like a little bit of torque steer because it makes the car feel alive so that's not a that's not a bad thing for me it, it's an observation not a, not a complaint at this point i haven't spoken about the steering now for regular viewers you'll know that i quite like my steering to be heavy and thankfully the i30 fastback n delivers on this particularly when you put it into sport well i was going to say sport when you put it into n or well if you have it set up in custom mode some may find that the steering in n mode is artificially heavy and i have seen a few people comment on that but i actually quite like it the steering is responsive as well just a little flick of the wrist and the car changes direction and this car feels quite agile as well even though it's not act actually that light i think off the top of my head this weighs around 1500 kilos so a featherweight this is not however having said that i don't think this feels like a particularly heavy car it doesn't feel like a, you have to drag it around the corner like an old grumpy dog that would rather stay at home. This car actually feels pretty light on its feet. So that's testament to the hard work that Alberts, Beerburn and Co. have put into this car. Mm, good stuff, good stuff. For Hyundai to do this as a kind of first stab and do it so well, it's it, it shouldn't be allowed. That would, be like, that would be like me picking up a paintbrush and after a bit of light practice, finding myself in the final of Portrait Artist of the Year. It just wouldn't happen, would it? Okay, this is technically the second attempt because they, they made the i30N hatchback before this, but it's essentially the same platform. This is one of those cars where you'll find any excuse to drive it. Darling, we're out of milk. Oh, are we? That's a, that's a pity. Looks like I'm going to have to jump into my i30 fastback end. Ha, huh, what a hardship. And that, for me, is a sign of a really good car. The kind of car you just want to drive. You've got nowhere to go, nowhere to be, no purpose, apart from just getting in and forming that, that machine and man relationship and just having a, a really good time. I never thought I'd want a Hyundai so much, but I do now. Forget about your badge snobbery. This is a really good car. Now, just for a few moments, I want to bring things back down to earth a little bit and speak about fuel economy. I know, I know, it's, yeah, 
it's not a fun subject. However, I know there are some of you that were asking about the fuel economy for this car, so it would be rude. Uh, it'd be rude for me not to deliver that information to you. So on a combined run, Hyundai states this engine is good for 34 mpg, and I'm currently doing 32.7, which is respectable because most of this week I've driven this car pretty hard. So I'm quite surprised that I've been getting pretty good fuel economy. In regard to CO2 emissions, this engine emits 188 grams per kilometer of CO2, meaning for the first year of VED, you will be required to pay 870 pounds. There we are, fuel economy, done. Let's move on to the more spicy, exotic, and fun things, shall we? As much as the interior is not the greatest place to be, when you're driving, driving along, you really, well, me personally, you really couldn't care less. Yeah, okay, so some of the materials aren't quite as premium as a German alternative, but when you've got a car this good, at this price, with this value, it's difficult to argue. Now, I know I've moaned about these things, but these are just really to bring them to your attention. But the, one of the other great things about this car is it comes with a five-year warranty, which already is impressive, but wait for this. That warranty also extends to track usage. So if you want to, want to take this to your local racetrack, the warranty will cover you. Can a Golf GTI offer you that? No. Can a Leon Cooper offer you that? No. Focus ST? No. Civic Type R? No. You get my point. At this point, you may think I've got nothing bad to say about this car and that I've been paid by Hyundai to give it a glowing review. Thanks. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the aspects of the i30 Fastback N that aren't so good. Now the interior, whilst it isn't offensive per se, it's not exactly screaming performance at me. It's quite a bland, dark interior if you ask me. Some of the materials are quite cheap and nasty as well. The door handles feel really flimsy. And just look at this handbrake. It looks like it belongs in a cheap city car. Just, it's quite nasty if I'm going to be honest. However, as a pure petrol head, I am pleased that it has a proper handbrake to begin with, so not all bad. Other negative aspects, well, because of the coupe styling, the rear visibility is, hmm, how can I put it politely, limited. And because of that lovely swooping roofline, it means taller passengers will have to pay the price in the rear for headroom, but you've always got the hatchback if you prefer that. Some may also find the exhaust a bit too shouty. <laughs> bit too boy racery but you can of course change the settings in the drive modes and make it a bit more custom and make it more suited to your tastes i touched upon value a little earlier and that's another strength of the i30 fastback n as mentioned earlier this car is on its way out but it would have cost you 30,000 310 pounds brand new although you can get them on the used car market for 22 and a half thousand pounds upwards the standard level of kit is generous to say the least including 19 inch alloys alcantara and leather sport seats heated front seats with electric adjustment climate control led lights heated steering wheel keyless entry front and rear parking sensors reversing camera eight inch touchscreen dab radio bluetooth smartphone connectivity and navigation to name but a few. As much as this car is all about performance, Hyundai has not scrimped on the safety kit as the i30 Fastback N offers six airbags, autonomous emergency braking, driver attention alert, lane departure warning, lane keep assist and hill start control. It's a practical car too, with a decent boot size offering 450 litres, that's 55 more than the hatchback, which can be extended to 1,351 litres when the rear seats are folded down. Okay, rear space will be tight for taller adults, as knee room is limited and thanks to the swooping roofline, so is headroom. On the plus side, those in the front get electronically adjustable seats, which are also heated. So it's not all bad. Well, unless you're in the rear. So, to conclude, the Hyundai i30 Fastback N. I think this is a very talented car, but sadly it may be overlooked because it has this. Yes, that's right, the Hyundai badge. But you know what? If you can look past that, I really urge that you should, you'll be getting a well-sorted, good-looking, generously equipped car. Yes, this isn't a Golf GTI, but you know what? It's kind of the better for it. 
So yes, bad snobs, you may not like this, but you are missing out on what is a very, very, very good car. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.